It's a huge treat to have Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google here. And you know, uh, I, I will give a little bit of a preamble more than I normally do, uh, and I think a lot of the team knows this, but it's always worth reminding the team. Uh, we wouldn't be here on many levels if it wasn't for Google. Uh, clearly, uh, you know, Khan Academy certainly got a, for its first attention on YouTube. I don't think I would have been able to do what I did had YouTube not existed when it did. Uh, some of you all might not realize, but in 2005, we were on Java servlet web hosting, and that wasn't scaling. <laughs> and so uh, in January, I was like, hey, there's this thing called App Engine. And we went on there, and, uh, and we, we have been ever since. So even from a platform point of view, uh, but most importantly, uh, in the early days when uh, you know, we were kind of not, not even clear that we could even become an organization, uh, Google and Google.org was one of the very first to step up and allow us to become a real organization. And ever since then, uh, through LearnStorm and even existing grants, uh, continuing to support this. So first of all, just thank you. Oh, wow. It's a lot of people are behind it. I'm glad we are part of something this great. So, Thank you. Uh, so, so let's just start, um, you know, you've well, you're not new to the job as CEO of Google anymore. It's been almost what, two years now, or a year and a half. I haven't counted, but something like that. So, so what's your view of the, you know, of, of the world? What you're hoping to do at Google? Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, having me here. Uh, you know, I have to confess uh, there are times when I have to speak at things like this and on topics which I don't know much about. I may sneak into Khan Academy and see a video here and there. So, uh, I'm a user of the platform as well. Uh, you know, from a Google standpoint, uh, in some ways, I think uh, we share a lot of, uh, you know, what your mission is as well. Our stated mission is to bring uh, information and knowledge, uh, you know, for everyone. Uh, we take the for everyone part seriously. And, you know, we, we are, we've been working on it for a while, but, you know, we, we again have this uh, renewed sense of excitement within the company because of machine learning and AI. We think over the next 10 years, we can you know, take a bunch of stuff we've been doing to a different level. And uh, you know, we, are, we are still in early days. Uh, you know, computers are just beginning to kind of get better at things like speech recognition, image recognition. That's what a lot of the excitement is about when we say uh, you know, we are, we are uh, making a lot of progress in machine learning. And uh, so using that thoughtfully across everything we do uh, and, and taking things to the next level is a big part of our focus. Uh, closely related to that is uh, you know, building computing platforms for everyone too. Um, I think, you know, I was personally very inspired by the OLPC project at the time, you know, getting, uh, and I think that notion of being able to make computing accessible to everyone is uh, very near and dear to a lot of us, particularly to me, uh, you know, I didn't have access to computing growing up, and uh, you know, I, I literally mainly got it towards the end of my college, and uh, so I have a very discreet uh, sense of you know the you know how it how it uh, changed, uh, what I was able to understand, what I was able to get out of it. So I think we are in this spot where it's very exciting to see computing, which you know historically worked for. A small percentage of the world now is, you know, that penetration is getting better and better. Uh, you know, mobile is at uh, three billion users now, and and uh, I, I can see signs we can scale it beyond that. Uh, so we are, beat with platforms like Chrome, Android. We've always cared about making computing more affordable, and uh, and reaching everyone. Uh, I think there are others working on connectivity as well. So the combination of all that, I think we can we can get to a stage where pretty much sometime within the next 10 years, you know, for most people in the world, I think you'll be able to give them something which with connectivity, you know, you have the access of uh, everything uh, in your hands. And so I think that's a pretty profound transformation. Uh, and so, you know, broadly that excites us. And so, and it serves our mission well. Uh, and we have to do well as a company to meanwhile, uh, you know, as, as we go through this. So a lot of it is, you know, actually viewing this advances in machine learning, and AI as an opportunity to bring it uh, in an equal way to everyone, and, and I think that's 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 largely what excites me. And, and yeah, and it's incredible. I mean, Google is one of the few organizations in the world that are in the position to do this. But on top of kind of all this, I would say deep technical work that y'all are doing, education, I've heard, is a big interest area for you. Uh, Google has several uh, initiatives in education, some of which we've been interfacing with. 
What's your view of Google's role in uh, education, either globally or in the U.S.? I think culturally we've always identified in a pretty deep way with academia, with education in general. And, uh, and so we see this as a big area where, you know, I think, you know, as I said, our mission kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, is complementary to it. And so we want to play a role uh, to the extent we can. Uh, we've been fortunate in the sense that you know our products have gotten very popular in uh, educational institutions all the way from K through 12, uh, largely with Google Apps first, and you know we have done other things like Classroom and Chromebooks and so on. We'll also do uh, you know uh, not-for-profit initiatives uh, in education, uh, education as well. So we are, we are investing more, and I think when I when I think about it, I you know I think education is obviously you know. Most of you here understand it better than me, but it's uh, it's complex, and you know we just think technology can play an enabling part. Uh, you know, I was talking with Sal about this a bit, but you know, I think when we look at when when I look at approaching many problems in the context of Google, we try to do things, we try to iterate, uh, we see what works, what doesn't work, and and then you know we do these things that way. That concept is hard to do in education, rightfully so, because you know you don't want to get things wrong. Uh, but I think it's important to figure out how to uh, innovate more. And in that context, I think technology can play a part, and so play a part in hopefully helping people uh, figure out what you know many things to try when things work, be able to do more of it, uh, scale it more. Um, you know, how do you bring uh, educators and Children all in a virtuous cycle together, which is what uh, you all are working on. So, we, you know, for me, when I look at it, it looks like a complex ecosystem. So, we want to see where we can enable these things, and uh, so from uh, from a from a standpoint of providing technology. But a lot of people are interested in Google uh, beyond just the products we build or the technology we provide. Uh, you know, Googlers are passionate; they want to volunteer a lot in education. Uh, for Google.org, uh, it's one of the uh, important pillars on which we invest. So I think that's what makes, uh, makes it a, a bigger thing for us. Yeah. And you know, here at Khan Academy, you mentioned you, you dabble in it a little bit. You were just telling me your daughter uses it uh, yeah. uh, through her school sometimes. Wh where do you see uh, ways that we can work together, how we can support each other's uh, goals? It's been interesting to see which, you know, from the first time I saw Khan Academy to actually, you know, um, my daughter, you know, I see her sometimes come and she has homework, but it's part of like, doing it in Khan Academy. I have to once in a while lean over and make sure she was not just using YouTube generally, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> outside of that small thing, you know, it's pretty amazing to see that, uh, you know, teachers are using it and uh, it's been, it's been uh, great to see. So you two are upset when your children are hooked on YouTube? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's a sign that something's working. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, it's, you know, it's amazing the kind of stuff you learn on YouTube. I almost miss it because they don't come to me with any questions. So like, you know, they, uh, they kind of figure out, they get their answers from YouTube and later I'm like, oh, you could have asked me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I would have known the answer. Um, but, you know, in terms of uh, us working together, you know, I do mean it when I say we think of our role as uh, enablers. Uh, you know, we participate in many ecosystems and, you know, and in that way we approach it. But I do think there are uh, areas where we care about, uh, you, know, for, you know, when I mentioned the for everyone part, I think it's important. We think one of the things that attracted me to Google and, you know, that Google search worked globally, right? And, you know, it's kind of like if you had access to computing and connectivity, and that's a big if, but if you had access to computing and connectivity, it actually really didn't matter where you were accessing Google from. You kind of got the same thing. and. Uh, that equality of access, I think, uh, I think is important. So hopefully, you know, uh, I'm interested in, uh, you know, our, our, our last round of efforts. You know, we were excited about your efforts to localize what you're doing uh, more broadly. I think that's important to us. Uh, so getting these things to work even in places like Brazil, Indonesia, India, and like how do you scale it up, I think is something we deeply care about. And to the extent we can play a part in that, we want to do that. Um, uh, you know, the other part is, I, you know, I think given we are working on things like not just our products, classroom, you know, to the extent we have feedback on how we can evolve what we do better, uh, you know, better to make all this uh, work more effectively for teachers and students from, for you all, you know, we are open to trading our products that way. 
you were mentioning that you know you guys are plugging into classroom and stuff that's you know encouraging for me to hear um, and you know we are also in early days of setting up teams internally at Google to do other things which are which have nothing to do with our products uh, on education so hopefully we can align better and make some of them more complementary yeah and, and just to, uh, you know we, we unfortunately we could talk for hours uh, but just as kind of a you know an ending question what advice you know you've seen Google grow from a, a relatively small stage uh, to now it's this thing that is you know actually delivering on its mission uh, and we have a huge mission the free world-class education for anyone anywhere and we, we, we like to think we're already making a dent in that but we, we're serious about delivering what advice do you have to us as you know a relatively small team uh, as we try to go and try to do that over the next five or ten years you know I you're doing this partly but you know I, I wouldn't underestimate um, you know the change you do at the tip of the tree how fast it can flow down um, and uh, you know I think uh, you know, I think you've already, you know, the fact that you guys are approaching a space like education and have shown that you can innovate in the context of that space, I think that thing is a big thing. You know, we take it for granted being in technology companies. Like anytime we face a problem, we think we can break, we fail by the way a lot, but you know, at least our attitude is that, you know, you can approach a, uh, anything, however complex it is with an engineering mindset, you know, you can, you try and understand how you know what are the various components of it how you can iterate and make things better uh, it's kind of the default assumption a lot of us have uh, but I think it doesn't always translate to uh, you know things like you know I mean many many outside things be it education or healthcare you know when I deal with this I you know I realize well we take this for granted and like that's not how it works I don't mean in a negative way there are good reasons why those systems are the way they are and you know the cost of a mistake is exceptionally high in something like healthcare and so on but i think figuring out how to uh, you know innovate uh, you know is just like i think an imperative and uh, and i think you know i think hopefully uh, you know you, you continue pushing uh, what you guys are doing already and i think you've changed already the conversation uh, i'm amazed at where all your name comes up and so you know, figuring out how to do that. I think because for every one thing you do, there is a multiplicative effect of how many other people get excited by it. So, you know, 100 people organization here, effectively over time, you're motivating thousands and tens and thousands of people to change their approaches and so on. I think I've always been, um, you know, the, the leveraged effect on top of a platform is always very counterintuitive to see. Like I can give thousands of examples, but the fact that everybody starts using phones and phones have GPS and location on them, you know, you won't assume that it would change transportation one day. But you kind of then like see, you know, ride sharing take off and things happen. Like, you know, none of the people who are working on phones ever had any remote uh, sense that like people would use phones and hence because of that how you get uh, car changes, right? And so. Anything you do at a platform level has these non-linear effects, uh, you know, extraordinarily leveraged ways to uh, change things. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of experience with this personally. Uh, early on when we were working on the web, uh, you know, a few people working on browsers made changes in the platform so that you can asynchronously, uh, you know, what, what was later called as Ajax, so that, for example, if you were doing email, just because you want to change something in the email or what you're seeing, you didn't have to reload the entire page, right? And that small change led to things like Google Maps. You can scroll, you know, you can drag and look at maps and, you know, how maybe YouTube works and how literally everything became interactive on the web. So anytime I think you work at a platform level, I think you end up impacting a lot more over time than you think. So I think trying to platformize what you do, uh, you know, so that, you know, others can take it, use it, over time, rethink it, uh, you know, I think it's very, very powerful. Um, so hopefully, you know, hopefully that's the way you impact uh, a lot of how education works as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for visiting and uh, let's do this again. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks.